And a good afternoon to you. I'm Huey Poplock. This is the Central Florida Computer Society Folks, Bob. Special Interest Group. And uh, uh, we're here every second Sunday of the month. And we talk about things dealing with Windows and occasionally some other computer related items. We connect with the Central Florida Computer Society. I'm sitting in my home in Bradenton, Florida, and we connect with the Central Florida Computer Society at the library in Castleberry, right outside of Orlando, Florida. Uh, CFCS uh, invites anyone who uh, would like to join, especially user group uh, members from around the country. Currently, we have about 10 people online, uh, and there's uh, and the audience is sitting in Castleberry, and I am ready to begin. So let me uh, minimize this and bring up our table of contents for today. And it's right here. There we go. Uh, as many of you know, uh, but in case you're watching this for the first time, I have a website at Huey.net. And a, a portion of that website is dedicated to the Windows SIG. We keep uh, a list of the notes and links. Uh, what you're seeing there are the notes for today. And those are all links that uh, you can check out afterwards. Uh, and then after the meeting, we are recording this after the meeting. And uh, once I get the recording and get it all together and add it if I need to, we get it up and get it online, and that also will appear on the same page. So feel free to share with any of your friends. Watch uh, 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 the recording at any time. Use it for computer user club meetings or examples of uh, uh, a Windows special interest group of another group, which is us, uh, to your group. So with that, uh, I welcome you, and let's get started. Ah, uh, one of the things I'm going to start with today, I came across this article, and let's, this is the first item here, Shut Up 10 Simplifies Window 10 Privacy Settings. And let me make that bigger for you. This is an article that I found, and they were talking about a program called Shut Up 10, which can be either installed or you can run it as a uh, uh, as just without installing it, you can just, it's a standalone application, I believe, uh, can be downloaded from the developers, O&O Software. Some of you may be familiar with them. They do some, they have some other utilities. Once it's open, the tool lists over about 100 settings in 13 categories dealing with Windows 10, privacy, application privacy, uh, security, web browser, Microsoft Edge, uh, synchronization of Windows settings, Cortana, which is the personal assistant, location services, user behavior, Windows Update, Windows Explorer, Windows Defender, and uh, Microsoft SpyNet, lock screen, and some miscellaneous items. Clicking on each uh, on the text of each will give you a feature, uh, give you more detail about them. And there's color-coded recommendations. And uh, some snaky Windows update changes are revealed. So it's also possible to select from a menu at the top, marked actions, and instantly switch every entry to the recommended settings. It's a simple option, but uh, it's probably worth checking uh, it manually. So let's, uh, it comes with no warranty, obviously, and they're asking for your opinion. But what I'm going to do next is let's take a look at, well, let's take a look at their website first, O&O's website for Shut Up 10. That's their logo there, which is a bullhorn with an air, with a line through it. Uh, pretty much what we just said. That's what the screen looks like. And there's a uh, a, a short video, and that's uh, what it's going to look like on the screen. But instead of just showing you uh, from this article, let's go ahead and uh, see, minimize this, and we'll open up Shut Up 10. It wants to uh, 
uh, have us do this as an administrator. And full, full screen it. And I don't think there's a way to make this look bigger. Let's try. No, control plus doesn't work. It says view group by character you know, and change language. So that's all I can do. I can't make it bigger. I'm sorry for that. But as you, as you see, there are different areas that I mentioned, the privacy, the app privacy, security, and it, it might be off on your, the edge. So I'm not going to make it so it's full screen. I'm just going to make it bigger. Uh, whoops, wrong item here. Where to go? It's right here. I grabbed the wrong thing here. And we'll make it bigger this way. Since I can't make the letters any bigger, what I want to do is make sure it's centered. So if for whatever reason it's not showing on somebody's screen, And, okay. Okay, so what they said is if you click on each one of these, notice it's green and red. Green means it's turned on, red means it's off. And over here it says recommended, and it's recommended yes or limited. Uh, so let's take a look at a couple of these just to see how it's, what it's saying here. Sharing of handwriting data disabled. It says, if you can write text in your computer manually, you can send a writing sample to Microsoft to enhance future handwriting recognition functions in the Windows versions. If you don't want to pass on your handwriting sample to Microsoft, then deactivate this function. I have it activated only because I didn't know it was set up that way, and it's probably a default. So I could shut that off simply by clicking here. And now if... <clears throat> what it's saying is if I'm making a change, do I want to create a system restore point? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. It's being created. So if we really screw it up, we can come back to this point. I'm not going to make changes. I'm just going to show you how you do it, and we'll take a look at some of these. And hopefully it gets created quickly or there's no problem. And it goes away, so that means it has been uh, created. So we've got some things here, camera and logo screen disabled. Again, uh, Windows 10 offers the possibility to operate the camera app from a locked PC directly from the locked screen. If you're unsure who uses a PC during your absence, then deactivate this function. Um, I'm just trying to look at some other things here. Bi uh, biometrical features disabled. If you don't use the hardware that fingerprint scan, facial recognition, or iris scan, then deactivate this. Uh, and let's see, under app privacy, app uh, access to user account information disabled. And if you want to uh, let's see the function allows apps access to the name and picture you provided in Windows 10. If you don't want to allow this, then deactivate the function. And I have it activated. Windows tracking of apps starts disabled. Uh, and then app access to diagnostic information disabled. I've got that turned on. Uh, apps, just uh, app access to, to email disabled. Disabling this function means apps will no longer have access to your mails. As a result, some apps may be limited in their functionality or no longer function at all, like a mail app. Um, under security, uh, we've got such things as password, password reveal button disabled. 
Uh, you can enable it so you can actually see what your password is. It'll reveal your password. Telemetry disabled, and what that means is Microsoft collects information about your computer, installed programs, and possible problems in Windows 10. Error reports are also sent to Microsoft. You can disable this function if you don't want Microsoft to have this information. Note, according to the user reports, disabling this setting may result in problems with registration of the Xbox program. Uh, uh, looking farther down under web browser, Microsoft Edge, disable tracking in the web, disable tracking, do not track, also DNT, means that Edge will send a message to the website indicating that no tracking of the user should take place. This means that the IP and cookies will not be saved. Uh, websites are not obligated to honor this request, but this is generally the case. This is why it makes sense to enable this setting. Uh, synchronization, I'm moving down here to synchronization of Windows settings. You can disable synchronization of various settings or all of them. Uh, Cortana, there's some things that you can disable. Location services. Uh, user behavior, uh, mostly telemetry, in other words, information being sent back to Microsoft. Uh, one of the reasons that you have the ability to do this, and usually uh, it still sends it out unless you shut it off by uh, default. And Microsoft wants to have th that information, and that's one of the things that uh, there's been a lot of articles concerning uh, uh, People don't want Microsoft to have access to any information from their computer. Under Windows Explorer, that's the, uh, uh, the file management system. Disable occasionally showing app suggestions in the start menu. Uh, don't show recently opened items and jump lists. Disable ads in the Windows Explorer or OneDrive. Uh, disable OneDrive access to the network before the login, and then Microsoft OneDrive disabled. And I have that shut off, so it's 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 enabled on mine. Uh, if you do not want Microsoft's cloud storage service OneDrive, then you d can deactivate it here. Uh, but I use it. Uh, Windows Defender and Microsoft SpyNet. Uh, submitting data samples to Microsoft disabled, reporting of malware infection information disabled, uh, or, or if you want it enabled. Lock screen, disable Windows Spotlight, uh, disable fun facts, tips, tricks, and more on your lock screen. And I have that uh, turned on, actually. I, I'm not sure if that means long with tips and tricks. The lock screen also fades in advertisements and additional information. These will send a lot of information to Microsoft that can be used to identify your computer as well as, as, your, as you personally. That's why this setting should be disabled. I think I have it enabled. Okay. Uh, and then there's some miscellaneous things on feedback and disabled key management and so on. Uh, any questions on that, Dick? Uh, I did mute your microphone. Uh, if there's any questions on this program, I'll unmute you. Yeah, there don't seem to be. Thank you. Uh, no questions? Good. Okay. Uh, that didn't take as long as I thought it would, but uh, I really didn't want to go into everything. Some of it I don't understand. Um, you can accept the changes. You can revert changes. You can show only changes. And, uh, and then when you save them, it actually, I think, needs to reboot. So uh, uh, do you want to close? Note settings may possibly revert to their previous status. If I've made some changes, that's all that's saying is they aren't going to be accepted. And let's see, do you want to close? And I'm going to say yes. Okay, so let's come back to our list of things we're covering today. And uh, that was that article. Now, Microsoft has done, is starting to do something they didn't do before, and that's uh, release some articles uh, 
of changes and updates that they're doing. And this is Microsoft releases new cumulative updates for Windows 10, the 1803, which was the one from earlier this year, and then the two from last year. Now, I know there was a, a question from, I believe it was uh, Ted, asked, well, if you have a problem installing one of the updates, and then you get another update later on, uh, what happens? Well, sometimes, usually, like these are accumulative. So let's take a look at this. Notice it says Windows 10 1803 cumulative update. So it probably fixes whatever a previous one that may not have been installed fixed. It may not. It depends upon what. Uh, what that uh, update is, but possibly after this is installed and if this does install and the other ones didn't, you might go back and try to install that as well. It doesn't, uh, if you've already updated something, it doesn't go back and update it again or update to an older version unless you're specifically trying to do that. So there shouldn't be a problem doing that. Uh, it may say it's not needed. Uh, there is, there used to be a way in which you could shut off uh, any updates that just didn't take. Uh, but if you get a lot of, if you're having a lot of them, you've got an issue that you might want to take care of. Usually those issues are some kind of a virus is on your system and you need to keep it uh, cleaned off. Uh, but you do want to do these updates. You'll notice that all of these up uh, improvements and fixes are usually dealing with security and this is the one reason that you number one that you shouldn't be on an older version of Windows you should be on Windows 10 and you should have the latest updates installed on a regular basis uh, to make sure that you're as secure as your system can be and you might want to check to see about Windows and so on. And you can go in to your, let's go ahead and just, uh, I hate to do that because it's going to go out and check to see if I have, I'm not going to open up the security, the update. Uh, let's see, let's see what happens. When you click on update and security, it was last checked this morning. Okay, so if I clicked on check for updates, it might do that, but you can view your update history and you can see what was installed and when. And you can see I have everything successfully installed. Uh, however, you may see something that was unsuccessful and then you may check it and then you may see it installed further up. In other words, it tried it again later and was successful. If you have one that isn't successful, I believe if you click on it, uh, I, it won't show it because all of these are have been successful, but I believe you can tell it, don't show me this anymore or don't try to install it, but you want to be careful doing that. So let's go ahead and close that and see if there's anything else. If you're using an earlier version of Windows 10, note that there are also updates for previous versions, including... Uh, uh, 1709 and 1703. So if you, if you haven't updated to the latest one, uh, which is version 1803, which was January, February, March, and it came out in April or the end of April, uh, and you should have by now updated to that. That was the big uh, update. Uh, be aware, and that's one of the next articles, be aware of the fact that Notice this nice segue into this next article. The next Windows 10 has a name and a date. The October 2018 update is due this fall. What they've been doing is, they, even though they've been saying uh, it's uh, 18, this is going to be 1810 will be the version number. Usually it's the next month or it's right at the end of that month. So probably the end of next month will be the next big update to Windows 10. So you want to make sure that you get uh, uh, that 
you've already done the 1803, and so you'll be ready for the 1810. Make sure you back up first, because if you have a problem, you can always revert back. If you don't back up and it bombs, there's a good possibility you may have to wipe and reload. Uh, this is right now codenamed Redstone 5, and so if you read anything on uh, things that are going into Redstone 5, that's what they're going to be talking about. Now, the one thing in this article... Huey? Uh, yes. We have a question from Bob. Okay. Um, I don't know if you'll get an echo because I'm kind of far away. But, um, you or um, Arvin just sent out an email, which you probably didn't look at because you, I don't know, I got it as soon as I walked in, um, saying that Microsoft just announced confirmed that there would be a new monthly charge for Windows 7 starting in 2020, I think. And they're apparently, they're already charging for Windows 10. Um, so will, will these updates um, be free once they change those operating systems to effectively ransomware, because in order to get the um, security updates, you have to pay them. Otherwise, your system then becomes vulnerable. Dick, I'm, I, I'm not understanding all of what he said. Uh, you're closer to the microphone. Can you kind of repeat or summarize what he said? Uh, uh, Arvin just sent out an e email. And uh, in it, he said that uh, Windows is going to begin charging for Windows 7 updates, security, update. security yeah. updates in the future. Okay, now repeat it, Bob. They're already charging for Windows. They're already charging for Windows 10. No, that's not true. Well, they're they're changing it to an online program where they have to pay it. Changing it to an online program? Windows uh, I've not heard of that. Uh, I, I, so I'm trying to think. I, I did hear something that has to do with enterprise, uh, which is your big corporate stuff. But uh, for, for uh, those of us end users, uh, as far as I know, no, there is no subscription basis. Uh, I've not seen anything. I'd have to read about it to to, to interpret and answer your question. <clears throat> I don't believe that's an accurate statement. Uh, they do uh, have shutoff dates for all of the versions of Windows where they no longer support them. And they may be doing some special things after the fact that if somebody really, there are some businesses that just their software runs on Windows 7, doesn't run on Windows 10, or they haven't tested it yet. And to work with them, they may be saying, okay, uh, we will create special patches for you and charge you for it. But as far as uh, uh, if, it's, if it's still within the support time frame for different versions of Windows, for instance, they don't update uh, Windows XP any longer and uh, if you're running Windows XP um, you're not going to get security updates <clears throat> so uh, I'm not sure if that's what he's referring to or not and I'd have to read an article to understand Wait, um, could we ask you to, to read uh, Arvin's email after this session with you and perhaps comment on the text thing about it because your opinion and your knowledge is, is would be a good part of discussing what Arvin is claiming in his recent Okay. Thing. Okay, Ted Ted is here with his computer and he is showing me an article in Forbes magazine that says Microsoft confirms Windows 7 new monthly charge. It's written by a Gordon Kelly, and uh, I guess uh, 
Dewey, when you get a chance, you might want to take a look at that. And, well, if he's uh, online with us, he can type in, uh, he can open up a chat box and give me the link, copy and paste the link to the article, and I can take a look at it. I'm not going to take time to go looking for it uh, in during the session, but if there's a link, I'll, I'll go to it. Okay, I, Ted, <clears throat> Ted heard you, and uh, he'll work on that. Okay. Nobody knows that. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, uh, in, in the meantime, just uh, the update is coming this fall. If you're updating on a regular basis, that shouldn't involve you anyway. If you're on Windows 7, you should be on Windows 10. And so if you're concerned about that, you might want to consider going to Windows 10. It's been around now for several years, a couple of years and you're using a very old version of Windows. It's not, even with, with, a, with updates and uh, security updates, it still is not as secure as Windows 10, and you're uh, endangering yourselves uh, if you're not uh, endangering yourself if you have not updated. So I, I highly recommend that you be on Windows 10, and if you're if you can't live in the in the present, then uh, if they're going to charge, they're going to charge. But Windows 10, no, as far as I know, they're not going to charge. Okay, the next item on here is sticky notes. You may have at one time, and let's uh, open this article up here. You may be familiar with what a sticky note is. Uh, a lot of you buy the little sticky note pads. You write on them and then stick them on your screen. Well, did you know that there is a sticky note program that's built into Windows? And this article tells you how to start it up, how to use it. Let me clear my throat here again. Uh, and, uh, and how to use it, it is in, uh, if, if you're one of those on Windows 7, it is in Windows 7 as well. But if you right-click uh, the entry in your Start menu and pin the taskbar, uh, so if so, in in the box, just type in Sticky Notes, and let's do that right here, S T I C K Y, and you'll see it's Sticky Notes there. You can then say, okay, right mouse click, and you can pin it to the Start or pin it to your taskbar, and uh, and then start it up and then use it, or you can just double-click on it and start it but you really want to have a way to get to it quickly. Uh, so that's, that's how you just get going with it. Once you, uh, once you get it, you can, you can open up notes. You can keep them open. You can keep them on your windows. You can have them on separate desktops. Uh, you can take notes with them. You can add times. You can add different things to them. Uh, just remember there are some uh, key short uh, key keyboard shortcuts. Uh, if you want to bold something, control B. Underline something, control U. Italics, control I. Strike through, control T. And a bullet, control shift L. Um, and you can stack them. You can have different colors for different topics and different things. You can, uh, if you have a tablet, you can actually write on them and post them on your screen in handwriting or uh, you can type on them, have them on your screen all the time over in one corner or one part of your screen. And so they're always there, uh, just like they would be as if you had the real sticky notes and had them stuck to your, your screen. Uh, you can enable some insights, uh, and that's pretty much it. And that's pretty much it for the, you know, if you know how to take a sticky note, put it on your desk, on your monitor, you can do the same thing with the program. So if you haven't used Sticky Notes, I know Robin used it on her Dell laptop until uh, it crashed, uh, uh, and she's now using a Chromebook. But uh, prior to that, she and she misses her Sticky Notes. And I believe there is a, a Sticky Note uh, Android app that she might be able to use on her uh, uh, Chromebook. But st having a Sticky Note, uh, a lot of people rely on them, and they're and they're good to have, and it's free. As part of Windows. The next item 
dealing with uh, dealing with Windows is Microsoft soon is going to automatically transcribe video files in OneDrive. If you're using OneDrive and have Office 365 subscribe, and you're an Office 365 subscriber, which I am, uh, you'll be able to automatically to transcribe video files. So if you, for instance, this program is a video file as I record it. Uh, what I'm understanding is I'm going to be able to do is if I keep it out on OneDrive, I can, I'll be able to have Microsoft go in and create actually a transcription. In other words, <clears throat> type out everything that I'm saying, your questions that you ask and so on will all be available. And you can see as an example over here, let me make that bigger so you can And this is what it's going to look like over here. Uh, it'll give a timestamp uh, and then say what, what is being said uh, in the video. So uh, Microsoft announced uh, uh, these, it's called AI or uh, artificial intelligence centric updates for the OneDrive and SharePoint users with an Office 365 subscription that bring more about the company's machine learning smarts to its file storage services. Uh, this is uh, supposed to become available by the end of the year, and I'm looking forward to trying it and taking a look at it. And it sounded exciting to me that, that I might be able to take some of my videos and then actually, uh, because I don't use a script, have a script at, uh, uh, as an afterthought, not as what I've used, but what I actually said. It would be nice. And with the the one, the main thing that they're talking about with these is now you can have these on a website, and they'll be Google's searchable as well as if it's on your hard drive, it'll it'll be word searchable to find information. So when you've talked about an item in a video, or somebody else has talked about an item in a video, that you'll be able to locate it. And I thought this was a a neat idea, and it's something new, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. And then after reading this, I happened to be looking at something, and uh, uh, and it was something from Twit, which is this week in technology, which are a series of podcasts and, and uh, blogs or uh, uh, v v v casts from uh, Leo Laporte and group. And what I want to do is let's see how do I get there from here. I don't want it to start. I'm going to kind of explain it first, but hang on here while it's getting ready. Let me let me uh, dogs? stop this for a moment and explain what's going on. Uh, this is from the iOS Today uh, Twit program. Once a week, they have one for iOS, which is the uh, over iPhone, iPad, uh, and so on. And then they also have one for Android, they have one for Windows, they have some for general things, they have some for uh, uh, enterprise. Uh, uh, so they have a lot of different programs. This is from the iOS one because uh, what they're talking about is a program f from a company called O&O &O uh, that is going to do transcriptions as well. And I thought that leading into it, I sh I'll play this, then we'll go look at the articles that I've found on it, because uh, I hadn't heard about this. I've not had a chance to try it. <clears throat> it is available now. There's an Android app, there's an iOS app, and there's a web app. In other words, you can use it with your desktop as well. Uh, I'm not sure how well it works with the uh, desktop. I'm not sure how well it works at all. I'm not sure... How what you can do, and I'll talk about that a little bit, but let's go ahead and watch about a five minute video and hopefully you'll be able to hear it all right. At the, uh, this is at the end of their broadcast. At the end of their broadcast, they do what they call the uh, uh, app hat and they wear crazy hats and uh, the two people that, are, that do the program, Leo and, and Megan, uh, wear a crazy hat and then they have an app that they demonstrate. And so that's why they're gonna look a little bit funny uh, but what I'm going to show you is where they're talking about this program. So let's take a look at it. 
All right, so that's my self care. Are you ready All for right. your app? Yeah, this is an app that uh, I think you and I could use. You may have to turn when it up. I bring you into the office for a <laughs> reprimand. Okay. 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 I'm this ready. Is actually, a recommendation from Jason F. and Dunn, my old producer. I said, I came in here, I got here. There was no Megan. I know, I was late. And so I said, well, good, because don't tell her, but I don't have an app cap yet. Oh, I just told her. And <laughs> he did. said, oh, I got a few. How about Otter? Otter? Otter. Otter's kind of cool. Now, Otter has a paid version and a free version. So I'll show you the free version. It gives you 600 minutes a month. That's 10 hours of conversations. Ooh. Uh, you can tie it to your calendar so it knows when you've got appointments. You can tie it to your contacts so it knows who's who. Let's let's just pretend. Let's do a role playing. Okay. Hello, Megan. Hello, Leo. I'm glad to have you here today. Thank you. I'm really ecstatic to be here. Yes. Uh, by the way, notice we're going to have a visit from. This is our calendar, right? So this could be the recording of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Megan, you've been doing such stellar work over the last few years oh, here at TWIT. Why, thank you. Thank you for saying that. I've that, been wondering. Yeah. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to tell you something that I've been keeping secret from you for some time. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Do you have any guess about what that could be? Uh, that you have been wanting to pay me more, but you nope. thought you would insult me. Nope. So you haven't. Nope. <laughs> okay. Underneath your desk... You will find, well, I put it there a long time ago, but it's taped there. It was a gift. I forgot to tell you, your very own Palm Pre. Oh, thank you. It, free for, for you to keep. Thank you. I should have told you sooner. <laughs> uh, that wasn't what I expected. But now that it's recorded, uh, and if it's not there, I'll be upset. So, <laughs> notice this whole time, it's been transcribing it. We can save it now. Uh, and this uh, is actually, they, they tied it to my calendar uh, event, which I could have changed. Uh, it did, I think, sort of figure out who's who. When you first get it, you train it. Let's play it back. Okay. Hello, Megan. Hello. I'm really excited. I'll tell you something that I've been keeping secret from you for some time. So we can jump to any part. I should have told you sooner. <laughs> Notice it doesn't transcribe laughter. I think it should say, ha, 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 ha. So this is kind of cool. So it is transcribing. It's recording, transcribing. It is an automated transcription. So as you know, sometimes with automated transcriptions, they're pretty weird. But because it ties it to the audio of it, you can quickly verify it. And I think this is a really great, bring this to meetings, Yeah. right? Bring so you'll have a record today. of it. Now, I'm going to retrain it a few more times because I, I would like to see if it uh, gets better at distinguishing my voice. It's trying to, uh, I guess, I gather. It's supposed to start a new paragraph, I think, when you have a new voice. And it did that. It did Hello, that. Megan. Hello, Leo. I'm glad to have you here today. Thank you. I'm really Sort of, but it put your voice in the middle of mine right there. Yeah, so, yeah our voices sound nothing alike. Yeah. Well, uh, you can use an external microphone. It supports Bluetooth microphones. There is a paid version, and with the paid version, you get uh, 6,000 minutes. So uh, that's called Otter Premium. I'm sorry, 6,000 transcription minutes per month. Uh, you also get some other options, including playback, uh, playback speeds. $80 a year or $10 a month. But I think if you use this in business, $10 a month is, or even $80 a year is not too bad, right? You can see all your conversations. Uh, and you can you can uh, have create groups so you can ha say you know this is my our team like for instance we have a uh, weekly staff meeting mm -hmm. we could do this in the staff meeting you should never record that there's so many inappropriate things that happen in the I meeting. know and that's why I want to record it for blackmail purposes uh, oh except that the problem with that is they all come from me yeah so <laughs> so if I were you I would surreptitiously and they do have an iPhone version bring this in and record but that's illegal the conversations. Right. Illegal in some states. Okay. In California, it is illegal. It's a two-party state. But you could bring this to other states, like New York State, and record. All right. So, yeah, th that is something to bring up, that, that, that state law may forbid recording uh, a conversation without telling the other person. You should inquire in California, where we call, call a two-party state. Both parties have to consent to the recording. Uh, a state like New York, where it's a one-party state, 
uh, only the recording person has to consent, which kind of really lets everybody off the hook on that one. Uh, so this is called Otter, O-T-T-E-R. It is really useful, I think, for meetings. Well, I'm going to start using this in our, uh, in our meetings. And, it, you know, one of the things you could do is distribute a transcript of, uh, of a meeting, and that way everybody's on the same page. We know what we said and so forth. That's really helpful because we often, you know, tell you things in meetings and then... And I pretend I didn't hear them. Yes, exactly. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I didn't hear them. All right. right. My app cap for the day. Megan Maroney. Leo Laporte. This concludes this broadcast of iOS Today. I hope you've enjoyed our show. We do the... It is a broadcast, actually. You can watch us do it live uh, every Monday around 9 a.m. I'm sorry, Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern time. That would be 1600 UTC on twit.tv slash live. If you do that, join us in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. Somebody sent us an email saying, where is this irc.twit.tv? And I said, well, it's at irc.twit.tv. It's on the web. You can use an IRC client because it is IRC chat, but you can also use a web client. Uh, so if you point your browser there, you'll, there you go. See, you give, your, give, it, give yourself a name. Channel is a default Twit Live. There are other channels. Uh, there's a help channel and side conversations and stuff like that. But start in Twit Live. That's where all the kids who are watching the show live are. If you can't watch live, you can download uh, episodes of all the shows we do at Twit from our website, twit.tv. In uh, this case, uh, twit.tv slash iOS. Every episode's up there, both audio and video. Or subscribe in your favorite podcast application. That way you'll uh, get it the minute it's published. Right? The very minute. The very minute. Email me at Megan and Twit.tv if you have questions or comments or corrections or you want to send a video. We love videos and love pictures. Okay. Uh, hopefully I got somebody's cameras on. So we want to un... I don't want to unmute you, but I need to turn your camera off. Please turn your camera off, Ed. Uh, Uh, let's see, manage participants. I can do it here. We don't need to. Okay, thank you. Um, so anyway, I let that go a little bit long so you could understand what, what they do. They have various programs, uh, uh, various broadcasts, all kinds of great information, and they demonstrate. I a lot of times listen to the audio and listen to it at night uh, with my headset on uh, while I'm laying in bed. Uh, so that's the otter, and let's take a look at, uh, you were talking about the Forbes article. This is from, oh, this is from Fast Company. I think I had a Forbes article as well. There's no perfect transcription app, but Otter is getting there. And this article talks a little bit about it. Uh, and the fact that it is, uh, uh, by the way, if you're a student, if you're a member of, of uh, uh, classes at UCF, uh, like Ted is, uh, you can probably get a student rate of three dollars a month if you wanted that, but probably uh, uh, six hundred minutes of transcription is probably more than most of us would need. If CFCS wanted to have it, like for their board meetings or something, they may have to pay for it. Uh, but still, six hundred minutes it should be in more than enough as well to be able to use that. Uh, there's an uh, there's an app for Android. There's one for iOS, and there's one I believe that you can run from the web using Windows. Uh, it looks interesting. Uh, it is available now, so you can try it, play with it. Uh, reading uh, and going to the website, which is right here, uh, Otter Voice Notes, this is the website for it. Uh, this is their website, and what I was looking at, and I'm going through their notes and so on. You can record, you can transcribe, you can share. I didn't see where you could take, let's say, a recording and bring it in and have it transcribed. I don't see where that's available. I'm not sure if the one Microsoft is going to have is going to have that ability or not. I think that's an important one, but this is a beginning to this sort of thing. You know, we used to have... Uh, it was a big deal if you could talk into your computer and have it 
uh, digitize what you're saying, and that now is is built into uh, your your Android and your iOS. Uh, you can do that uh, uh, without having even a uh, to buy a program. Uh, this uh, so uh, it, it's the artificial intelligence is growing, and the ability and the possibilities of what we can do with this is increasing each time they come out with something. So I think this is uh, exciting if, if it's something that you can use. Uh, now, they did talk about the legalities. In Florida, you cannot record voice of somebody without them knowing it. In other words, you can't ha turn on a, re a tape recorder and go and go and interview somebody and not tell them that you're recording it. It's illegal in the state of Florida. Uh, they need to know that you're recording it and okay it. Not only know it, but be aware, be aware of it, but, but if you're going to record it, uh, they need to uh, have okayed it. Uh, I know I did some video mystery shopping, and for me to go into to mystery shop somebody, I couldn't record them without them prior filling out some kind of form with their bosses saying that they knew that someone's going to do that, do that and they would okay it. Uh, however, <laughs> technology and the law doesn't always keep up with each other. Uh, the law doesn't keep up with the technology. And in the state of Florida, you can't record somebody's voice, but you can record video without voice, uh, without a problem because there's no law saying you can't do it. Because they, when they made the law, it, there was no uh, ability to do video. So they never included that in the law and they never added another law saying you couldn't do that with somebody without somebody approving it. However, in public places, uh, I'm not sure how that works when you take a picture, when you know, you, uh, you're, you're taking something uh, of a live event. Uh, the video part of it is fine. The audio may be illegal to do without them okaying it in the state of Florida. It's different in different states. Uh, any questions uh, so far? Any, no, any, op any opinions of all of this? Um, any what? Any opinions? Any opinions? Scary. It's scary. There is a what just there bob a bob's talking just a second photograph a u.s citizen without their permission there's a federal law that you cannot photograph a u.s citizen without their permission i'm not sure about that they are i don't know about video but there's a law for still photography and since video is really just high speed still photography. Um, the, the law states that if they are not a citizen, they are considered a primitive. That, that's the term used in the law. I, I always thought it was kind of a funny term. And, and you could you can photograph them, at least you're not breaking any United States law. I don't go to Timbuktu and photograph people, maybe there's a Timbuktu law, but, um, but the U.S. would not prosecute you for bringing back those pictures of natives or even Canadians. <laughs> U.S. citizens, um, they can, you have to pay them. What it is is a copyright law. They have the right to the image, and you can't use it unless they're in a public place where they know they're likely to be photographed. There are exceptions, like at rallies or whatever. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I think what you're trying to say, and, and, and I understand, uh, you can't just take pictures of people and then post them somewhere. They, you do need to get their permission uh, for photographs. As far as, uh, but in, in, in a lot of cases where it's in a public place where they would, uh, that where they can expect to be uh, uh, photographed, uh, that 
it may not apply. Sometimes when you go to an event, it will say, uh, uh, by attending, you understand that there will be there may be pictures taken and that you may be in them. Uh, uh, but that doesn't always happen. But then again, I can't just go up and say, okay, uh, uh, there's, there's Bob Black. I'm going to take a picture of him, and then I'm going to go post it somewhere. It, you really can't do that because uh, he hasn't given his permission. Uh, but it's, it's gotten a lot looser within, now in the days of, of, of the Internet and Facebook and so on that uh, it, it would be a lot harder to – uh, to sue somebody how, how does, just by posting it. Now, if you're doing something with it that that uh, is illegal or uh, inflammatory or something else, they there might be some ways around it. But yeah, you've got to really be careful of of whose picture you take. I do know that when I take pictures of and there are children involved, or if I even pick up a picture from somewhere's on the web to use with some children in it. Uh, I will generally uh, either gray out or uh, deface the the face so it's not recognizable uh, for the children because there are some laws about that that you have to be careful of because they're, they're minors and their parents may object to you posting them. But uh, but as far as is uh, not getting off of this topic too much. To have the ability to do transcripts of a discussion or a meeting and be able to, I, I know uh, board members in various organizations, including CFCS, I believe the, they were at, at, at some time recording it so the secretary could then make out the, uh, uh, the secretary notes this way it would transcribe them and it would already be in typewritten form. You didn't just have to go in and make and to verify that it was accurate. Uh, and it time stamps it and uh, uh, you can keep the recording with it. So uh, if there's any question, not only can you show them the typewritten, but you can also play back the audio. So I, I, I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, uh, I think it will be great. Uh, again, the one thing that I'm looking for is to be to be able to uh, transcribe videos that I've already completed, like these uh, Sunday broadcasts for CFCS and the Windows SIG. I'd like to be able to take some of those and digitize the the text or transcribe. I guess is is the word. Transcribe the. Uh, uh, what's being said so I can search when when I know that we've discussed something at, w at one of the meetings I can search and figure out what meeting it was and where in that meeting we've discussed it or I discussed it. So uh, I, I, I think it's again a, a place that we haven't gone before that we now have technology that can <coughs> utilize the magic of us just talking in it not only recording it, but also typing it at the same time. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, there was one comment that somebody put in the chat box. Uh, uh, James uh, Martis, uh, in, in reference to what was said earlier, uh, Microsoft is going to start charging for Windows 7 updates only after its end of life is reached on January 14, 2020. Uh, much like they did for Windows XP and those pesky ATM machines. Uh, and then there's a link to the article, and I'll go and take a look at that. So, uh, uh, so it, it looks like that, yeah, av after the end of life, and that's, that's normal, and that's what they d have done with other versions of Windows as well. It's not a big deal unless you happen to be one that has not updated to Windows 10, then it may become a big deal to you. Bob has another co comment. I have another question about Otter. Which I don't know why they didn't call it Otter. Um, does it do um, only English transcriptions or can it do other languages 
uh, and can it do lip reading? Or do you know of a program that can transcribe lip reading? Thank you. Do you hear that, Huey? Uh, something to do with other languages and. Yeah, first of all, he asked about whether this was English only or it could do whether Otter could do other languages. And he also asked whether there's a program out there that can read lips and uh, transcribe the um, what is being said. Uh, the reading lips one, I don't think uh, at this point there is. I've not heard of anything like that. I have heard of uh, uh, the ability to translate on the fly. There are some programs out there. I know iOS has one, and I think Android does as well, that I could be uh, with somebody and and talking to them, and we can just use our phones, be next to each other. I talk in English. They talk in whatever language that they have, and they see on their phone or they hear it as uh, a translation, and then I hear it translated back. Uh, that's available now. Uh, as far as I can't remember, I think I did look at and I found a place somewhere where there was a uh, uh, some information and on the help center. Can I use it? Uh, is there a cost? What languages support? We currently support English. Uh, but I believe there were, I, I read somewhere that they were working on other languages as well. And so I guess that says just English right now. The Microsoft one may be in other languages. Maybe that's where I saw it. Okay, uh, the last item that was on here just was just another article about 5G because we were talking about it last month and I just added it on. There, there were still some questions of what 5G was or is. And uh, it's, this is just a, I'm not going to go through this article. This was from the middle of August. It was right after our discussion last month. But uh, just talking about 5G and what, uh, how it works. And then the fact that who's launching it and when uh, AT&T proclaimed it'll be the first with mobile 5G when it launches a network in 12 cities by the end of this year. Um, but you're, you've, you've got to have a phone that's capable of it as well. And so far, there are no phones that have the ability to use 5G. It's only going to be in certain areas to begin with. Uh, Verizon is starting with a fixed 5G home internet service launching in three to five cities by the end of 2018. Sacramento will be the first city they'll use home routers with fixed antennas that Verizon will be able to supply and getting around the pesky phone problem. Uh, let's see, T-Mobile is taking yet another approach. The company is building nationwide 5G network on the 600 megahertz band starting in 2019, which is, you know, less than six months away, with full national coverage by 2020. Full national coverage by 2020. So another year and a half. Uh, the low band network will be supplemented by millimeter wavelength in large cities, which is sort of 5G, AT&T, and Verizon are building out. So they're not, it's not going to all be the same to begin with. So I would imagine the phones are going to be an issue, uh, but you'll have to buy a phone that's capable of 5G, and then you're going to have to be in an area that has 5G service. And, and if you recall, I think uh, when 3G first came out, I think that was some of the limitations. Not all areas had 3G available or LTE available, and they were different in, for different companies and so on. And, and it eventually will work itself out and that we'll be able to use the same phones uh, with different companies and be able to, to connect. But uh, uh, this is all coming, it's all new, and it's going to be uh, much faster, and there'll be more available uh, from your companies, and obviously they'll have different prices uh, in the beginning. 
uh, they, it may be lower to get you enticed, or it may be a high just to uh, just because they can. So that's coming uh, later this year, and next year you're going to be hearing a lot about 5G. And so if you want to know what 5G is, you might want to read this article and then hang on to it and, uh, uh, and, and take a look at it as you see and hear more about 5G. You'll be able to explain to other people what it is when they say, what is that? And so on that note, uh, let's see, uh, somebody else, what internet speed would be required? Uh, that should be speed, what speed? Uh, Ron, I'm not sure as far as what is, as far as the transcription is going to be. Um, I don't think you need fast transmission for that. For the 5G, it's going to be very fast. Uh, and then uh, James Martis did give a link. Uh, if you go to the chat box, there's a link there from James uh, to an article. It's a link to a lip reading translation service. So, Bob, yes, the answer to that apparently is there is one. Uh, and it's in the chat box for those of you who are at home and let me uh, go ahead and open it up so it'll be in here, and I'll add this to the website. Read real-time lip reading deciphers speech from facial expressions. Uh, we have a couple of comments here. Okay. Huey, this is Robert. Um, I read the other day that Congress is getting involved with 5G to make it easier for them to put up transmitters, because I guess they're like the size of backpacks, and you have to have them spaced much closer together than a 4G network, and it will cut through the red tape so that power poles and such could actually be used without, uh, like Duke Energy saying no, uh, Congress is actually getting involved to make it easier for a nationwide 5G network. Okay, for those of you at, at, uh, online, if you didn't hear uh, what he just said, that apparently Congress is getting involved and they're trying to make some laws that will make it easier to put up the, uh, uh, the equipment that's needed for 5G because it has to, 5G is going to require more towers and more uh, uh, what's the, uh, uh, not towers so much, but uh, I'm trying to think of the words. Uh, transmitters. Uh, they have to be closer together. Uh, the, the field, uh, the, the length is not as great as it is for the other. Uh, and, I, and I read in one of those just, just a few minutes ago when I read the article, I think it was Verizon or one of them is going to be using uh, access points from people's private, uh, from their customers, and utilize that as well. So uh, uh, even you're going to be using equipment that they put out there to make it happen. So uh, yeah, it's going to require the ability to have more transmitters. So they will need to have the access to be able to put them up. OK, Ted has a comment. Hi, hey, Louie. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, yeah, barely, but uh, Dick can repeat it. Go ahead. Okay, last month the subject about 5G was the health effects of the radiation. The health effects of the radiation. Yeah. yeah, that was last month we did talk about it. There's some people that are concerned about it. There's some people concerned about uh, radio waves from, uh, from radio and television and phones. Uh, there's people that wear tinfoil hats. Uh, it, it, we, there is no definitive answer to that. And is there a long term or a, a problem? If most of the articles were from unknown, uh, little known sources, I'm not seeing any of the major uh, news and technology locations talking about it. So uh, my guess is that yeah, there are some people that just uh, are afraid of any kind of a 
uh, something that's available in the air, and uh, we'll have to see. Uh, as far as long term goes, I don't think you and I have to worry about it. Uh, <laughs> as, far, as far as the uh, uh, need to put these uh, transmitters closer together, since they can put televisions and internet access on refrigerators, I propose that they just put 5G transmitters on all refrigerators, and that solves the problem. Well, there's probably going to be a lot of that because uh, the, one of the things that they want to use the uh, 5G for is for the Internet of Things and be able to talk to various pieces of equipment. So uh, to make your... Uh, your uh, home assistance, whether it be the uh, the Amazon product, the Google product, and so on. Uh, washers and dryers now have uh, a ability to be on the internet and refrigerators and so on, and, and to make that all happen. And the fact that automobiles now, you're starting to see more and more automobiles are going to have internet capabilities as soon as you turn the engine on. Uh, and they'll having 5G as you go down the street. They're they're going to want to have some kind of access from somewhere. So you're going to start seeing a lot of that, absolutely. And it, being on the refrigerator is probably not a bad idea. Okay, so uh, here's the article on the lip uh, reading decipher speech from facial uh, contact. Contact us today for real time. Uh, they charge you for it, but it, it can be done. <coughs> There's nothing on here that says how much it is, but I'm sure it's not cheap. But uh, it certainly uh, is available, Bob. So on that note, uh, and if there's no other questions or comments, I'm looking online to see if there's anybody that's typed anything. If you've got no questions there, I think that's it from me. Uh, yes. Much. It's been informative. I appreciate the time you've taken and the effort you put into preparing for this. Well, thank you. I enjoy it. Uh, you, can, you can take a look at, uh, at the website and go. I've got uh, notes going back to around 2008. So feel free to go back and any of the recordings, uh, take a look at. Uh, uh, be glad to have you, uh, uh, any of the user groups that are out there, I'd be glad to have them use them as well. So on that note, uh, this is Huey Poplock saying thank you for joining us. And uh, let me end the recording. And then I'll say uh, goodbye to everybody. And uh,